welcome back to part 8 of Final Fantasy 7 Remake, where today we're going to wrap up and get our rewards for the Jesse job, and then essentially just see what the morning brings, because there's a lot of little things that we aren't involved in that the morning is going to make us involved in that you'll see. Well, if it isn't Cloud Strife, was wondering when you'd show up. Without further ado, here you are. Thanks for stepping up, Merc. <laughs> And now, for the cherry on top. Oh. Okay, I get it. Mind letting me breathe? Depends. Mind coming over tomorrow night? My roommates should all be out for a while. Are you seriously that desperate? Just let go already. Only if you promise to come back tomorrow night. Deal? Not happening. Ah, sorry. Little too in your face? I'll just have to change it up then. <laughs> Nighty night. Psych! I love the entirety of that cutscene. Just the fact that even Cloud turns around and just goes, Are you that desperate? <laughs> like, even Cloud's like, Wait, are you really this? <laughs> this bad? <laughs> uh, but it's all an act. It's all, a, it's all a play, as Wedge told us at the end of last part. She does it because she just gets, she finds it fun to just be that kind of person, to joke around. But before you go up, if you haven't already, go talk to... Um, this girl over here by the board that counts how many enemies are and get your reward for doing so If you don't kill enough fiends to make it to 50 to get the reward Don't stress about it because that number will actually carry over into new game plus So you can get your 50th later on in hard mode if you so desire But whilst we're here, or do I not? Oh, I come back So, so I think I, I thought I brought another wind just so I could have more members of the team use it Huh, oh, never mind but make the most of your shopping because you're gonna have a, not a boss fight per se, but a definitely an intense situation arise after you slept the night. Because going into the next morning, we've got the actual end of the chapter. As I mentioned last part, this chapter doesn't end when you think it is. And going into hard mode, you need to be wary of when chapters actually end. This chapter doesn't end until the fight that's going to happen in the morning. After that fight, you'll do it, so you need to be aware of your SP until that point, or MP even. Cloud? Yeah. You were out for a while. Just walking. I ran into Johnny, by the way. Said not to worry, he was getting out of town. Uh... Oh, that guy. You weren't thinking of leaving Midgar anytime soon, were you? Hmm. Well, seems this old friend of mine's in a tight spot. Long time ago I said I'd be there for her. Made a promise. So... can't say this is quite what I had in mind when I put that on you way back when. If you want to talk, I'm listening. Huh? What's with you all of a sudden? With me? Like you're losing that hard edge. That bad? Not at all. I like it. Maybe Marlene won't be so scared of you next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad to have you back, Cloud. Really glad. Oh, it's pretty late, huh? I'd like to catch up more, but we should probably both get some sleep, yeah? Yeah. Good night, then. Good night, Tifa.
What's wrong? Come with me! Quickly! We were getting ready to set out when those things showed up and came after us. The others? Barrett and Jesse are holding their ground, but for how long? I don't know. Let's go. Right. Ready? You know it. This is the fight I was talking about. This still counts as chapter four. So everything you had carrying over from um, the last fight will be in this one on hard mode. As I said, you cannot restore magic until chapter reset on hard mode. So you'll still have the same amount of MP you had here that you had after the roach fight last time. That's what I mean by you need to be wary of when chapters actually end. Because otherwise you can get caught with your pants down at the last gasp of this chapter. And you don't want that. <laughs> but this section I find kind of annoying. And this because this isn't the only time we're going to fight these specters. And I get that it's kind of deliberate. Part of the reason why these guys are annoying is tied to their purpose. Which we'll get to much later on. So I won't spoil it now. But these things... They're, yeah, they're never the easiest to fight. They move around a lot. You have to kind of pressure them with magic before you can get in and actually kill them. It's it's a work of art to get to deal with them, and it's never the most fun. Because if you try and hit them around, you can actually get like a few lucky bravers and just kill them in one go like that. But your main strategy is to use magic on them because that will make them go into pressure so you can get your stagger. But as we try and navigate, this comes a nice little... It's entirely linear, this section, so it's not too much of one. But it becomes a nice little knowledge test here of trying to remember how many different routes there are to get to 7th Heaven from here. So every time the spirits block off another road, you can go, Oh, okay, well, we can try and get there by going this way instead. And like I said, it's one of those things that is entirely linear, so it's not... It, doesn't, it barely requires any thought, really. It kind of does a lot of the work for you. But it's nice. It's a nice incentive in that regard. And I like having to almost go through the sea of spirits in this section here. Even if this game does fall victim of having a few too many walking sections. And like if you've been on this channel for a while you know I really don't like that. I feel like, like do a full cutscene. Don't do a walking section because it's just a lower budget cutscene. That's less interesting and more often than not can't be skipped for some reason. And this game, as I said, this game does do it from time to time as well. But I think the game's merits more than make up for its faults. It is one of those things that I don't mind criticising on. Because I do think it is just the nature of the beast. And I do expect it to be back in the later parts. I expect it to be present in every part in some form or another. Like, I can already imagine when we get to the City of the Ancients, it's going to be nothing but walking. Just because they're going to use it as like a huge plot ensemble. But to be fair, that is something I'm very curious about. It's probably the most exciting thing to me about what's going to be on the future parts. With how much they fully realised um, Midgar in this part, how well are they going to fully realise the rest of Final Fantasy VII's world in the later um, parts? You know, like, that to me is just a very exciting prospect. And we technically have a boss fight here, but... In my head, I've never really counted it as one. I count the next boss as the one in... Actually, to be fair, a fair number of chapters away from now. The boss fights in the early half of the game are pretty reasonably spaced out in terms of, like, major event bosses. Because, like, we had the boss in Chapter 1, we had Roach in Chapter 4, and then the next one is, like, Chapter 7 in my... Like, like it's, like, what ones I count as major bosses. Like, I don't count this as a major boss. I count it more as just, like, a an event that happens to have a stronger enemy. Sort of like how the, that extra strong guard at the end of chapter 2, I treat that the same. It's like just like a, a normal encounter that happens to have a stronger enemy. Because this spectre, the way it works is when you hurt the other enemies or kill the other enemies around the environment, it directly affects the main spectre, allowing you to hurt it more, making it vulnerable. If you kill enough of the other spectres, you can force it to stagger almost immediately, making it so its health will start then plummeting. The only annoying thing is, is that there's a good chance you won't kill it in one cycle. And what I mean is, you'll get it staggered, but you probably won't do all its health in one go. It will take two rounds. And because of how much of a long stretch it is sometimes to deal with these spirits, and how annoying it can be, because like I said, magic is your best friend here. And if you somehow don't have magic equipped, then oof. It might not, act it might not actually be a bad idea to restart from checkpoint, because as you might have seen during that cutscene, 
before this part started, during it, the square button popped up in the bottom left corner. If you hold it down during the cutscene, as soon as it starts this section, it will immediately force you into the pause menu so you can adjust your equipment and material. And it does that a lot during this game. If there's a boss fight or significant fight that's about to happen, that the game doesn't expect you to predict or be able to work out is happening. Like, if you're about to walk into a giant arena, then it's not going to do it because it knows you, you've got a brain. You can see it's coming. But, like, in that instance, you didn't have a reason to expect this fight to just happen. So, they make it so you can choose to bring up the pause menu as soon as it starts by holding down square during the cutscene. And I love that they do that. So you never, you're never completely caught unaware and are underprepared for a situation you can alter things and later in the game you'll start doing it if there's a boss fight back to back the cutscene in between the fights it will let you do the menu thing again but we're just about done here how's your ammo running low <laughs> Some kind of... I don't know. Guess I shouldn't be surprised, though. Never can tell what weird shit will come crawling out of the scrap down here. It's those reactors. I'm telling you. It hurt? Wish I could say it didn't, but... Yeah. <laughs> God, this is so embarrassing. I hate playing the damsel in distress. It happens. What did you do to your leg? Did, did did does it hurt? Not nearly as much as the fuss everyone's making. Still, I think you ought to avoid putting any. I'm fine. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's enough. You're out, Jesse. Huh? What about the mission? We already sent Biggs in. Remember? Don't tell me you're thinking of calling it off. Uh, no, we got this. The hell you do. If you need someone to step up, I'm your man! <coughs> okay, so here's the thing. I'm gonna need a raise. Consider it done. All right, everyone, clouds in. The mission is on. Go and raise some hell for me, okay? Hmm. Listen, Wedge. I need you to hang back and guard the home front. What? But I'm in perfect health! Which makes you the perfect choice to look after Jesse and Marlene. <sighs> hey. Let's get this show on the road to Marco Reactor 5. Once you got your gear in order, head to the station for the meet. Got it? Hmm. <laughs> This will help you get squared away. Don't tell me I never did nothing for you. I'm counting on you, soldier boy. I love the shift in tone from Barrett from the start of the game to now. At the start of the game, he was like, we, like he was talking about how we paid too Your much. And he's like, it's like, you better be worth every single last gill because it was so expensive from the get cloud. It was 2,000 gill to get him. So it was super expensive for how little money they have. Yeah, in this instance, because their back's against the wall and it's a critical moment that they need him. The moment cloud says, well, I'm going to need a raise. I was like, yep, short deal, done. He's on the mission. He's good. Like, he's such an immediate tone change. He's like, yeah, we need cloud so we can pay him wherever the 
buggy ones Not later. <laughs> but yeah, um, in the original seven, none of that happened. You were just recruited to come back to on the second one. But in this one, because All right. of just how it was Let's written and how structure is, sure. there's a lot less trust in Cloud at that right. point. So um, Barrett huh? didn't want to bring him on the next mission. So they had to find a way in the narrative to make it that Cloud still goes so the main plot continues as expected. And so that's how they did it. And the game's going to only now teach you about non-party allies. Because Barrett is now in the non-party ally slot. So you can finally rearrange his materia and upgrade his weapons. Which I highly recommend you do because at this stage in the game... It will give him more materia slots. <laughs> you can get him more materia slots. Because right now, one and one is awful. It's really not good. It wasn't good in chapter one. And you, it's, you, you'll notice it quick if you don't start upgrading that weapon. Because look at Cloud and Tifa in comparison. Like, Cloud and Tifa are rolling in it in comparison. They're still not great. We can make that a lot better. You can make it, I believe it's six and six. In total in the end. So you can have up to 12 slots ignoring the summon slot. Which, in fact, you could get more in um, the original seven, but I make se I completely understand why they made it less for this because it's only part one. It's the whole if you give you access to full power at, um, in this, where's there to go in the later parts, you know? But our next actual destination is to go back to the train yard when we first arrived in this sector to hop on the train to go to you know sector five, I believe it is, to try and block that reactor as well. Because if we went straight to reactor 2, it'd be a bit too obvious, so we have to kind of just go a bit more scatterbrained around the place to get what we need. Which I'm not sure how Barrett thinks that's going to work, because if it does work and he starts destroying more and more reactors, there's going to be a point, right, where there's very little reactors left and they can just hole up security on all of them. Think about that for a second, you know? You know? Like, there's going to be a point where no matter... What? If he, if he destroys all, like seven of the eight reactors, they're going to maximum security the last reactor. Like, it's going to get harder after every one you blow up. What, are they expecting, like, Shinra to just cave into demands before they get to that one? Like, no. <laughs> if you haven't gathered already, Shinra really don't care for us. They just see us as a bug to be squashed. They really don't see us as any kind of threat, even after blowing up the first reactor. And they're really not going to either if we blow up this second one. Barrett's quest to free the world of its, of its like, soul-sucking very much feels like what, like screaming into the wind sometimes. And I do feel for him. Like You can understand why he feels the way he is. And I like the fact that this game, just like in the original, at points will challenge his more preachy nature. And challenge, like, how he is and how he sees the world and bring up, it's like, well, no, there is a lot of flaws in your argument. I get that you see yourself the good guy here, but not everything quite works that way. The biggest obvious one was actually kind of, like, touched upon in Chapter 2, and you can see it for yourself. The price to pay for trying to be the saviour and destroy the reactors, was putting loads of people out of jobs, putting people in harm's way, blowing up people's homes, just because of it being a byproduct of being too close to the marker reactor and being powered by the marker reactor. It's like if someone destroyed the power generator in your, in like, in your town, like the main central one, and the whole town went offline. And they were saying they were doing it for like freedom fighting or something like that. No matter how justified they feel they are, they've, like loads of houses about to go cold. Loads of houses are about to go out of power. Elderly might struggle because of that lack of power to keep themselves safe. You know? Like, they, that's what they were kind of trying to touch upon in this. It's like, yeah, Barrett might see himself as, like, a necessary evil to try and save the world. But at what cost to the general public is it making? And I love the fact that it discusses that. Because there are a lo lot of games where you're like, it's the Freedom Fighter group who cause all the chaos and mayhem and they do no wrong and they're the good guys through and through. But Final Fantasy VII goes out of its way in both the original and this to kind of say, well, hang on a minute. What about the people that get affected along the way of your little personal heroics? Before you go to the train station, though, I'd highly recommend visiting the shops, specifically the weapon shop, to get some better equipment. Because you should have some guild racked up now from doing all the side quests we did earlier. And if not, then yikes, that's on you. But, but yeah, buy some stuff. There's going to be a point later on where you're going to see me pretty much stop buying things. Just because there's a few like secret um, like scenarios or like special events that require guild that I want to show off. 
the main one is not until all the way in like chapter 9, I think. And if you're sitting here and watching along and going, oh, that won't be too far along. We've kind of blasted through these chapters. I mean, when we hop on that train, we'll be going into chapter 5. We're like doing really well. Trust me when I say this. Trust me a lot when I say this. The chapters are going to get a lot longer soon. Some of the chapters later in the game are horrendously long. One of my biggest criticisms I have of this game, and it's more noticeable in hard mode. Like in normal, you don't give it a second thought, but in hard mode, when like your your safety net is chapter endings, chapter nine becomes hellishly big. Chapter nine should have been split in half, and there's another chapter. Oh, uh, I want to say sixteen, either fifteen or sixteen. I think it's sixteen. Is another one that I thought should have been split in half because it's also extremely long. And if they'd done that, it would have made ch 20 chapters total, which is a nice round number. But as it stands, there's 18 chapters in this game. And two of them are just horrendously gargantuan. <laughs> which is fine because one of those two gargantuan chapters is one of my favourite chapters in the game. And so I, I enjoy it. It's just every time you go through it, you got to do the boring half first. Because I genuinely think it should have been split in half. The first half should have been its own chapter. The later half should have been it, like its own beast because it's already so big. But the later half was already... It's like the later three quarters of it. It's probably the more accurate way to put it. It is genuinely huge. Also, there's a music piece in here that I miss, I think. that You can see in the top left, there's a music track I haven't picked up here. And I don't check for it. I just keep on running. If you talk to the people around this area, you can get it. So it's not the end of the world. I just didn't register it. That was on me. I just didn't notice it. But all that being said, when you're ready, come over here and talk to Barrett and it will end the chapter as you hop on the train. Where it will come up saying, are you ready first? So when you say yes, then it'll end the chapter and you hop on the train, yada yada. Do you think Biggs is on schedule? All we can do is hope. Today really gotta be the day, huh? Ain't no stopping this train we're on, son. A lot of people risked their lives to get it rolling. Already put the word out, more's coming too. You shut them all down by the day, but we shut another down for you. Ain't on us, not us. Play it cool. We have raised the threat level and entered a state of heightened alert. All lines are currently experiencing delays. We anticipate that our arrival in Sector 4 will be later than scheduled. The target's Marco Reactor 5. From the station, we take the back streets. Once we're inside the facility, it's the same deal as last time. Head for Marco storage. And then blow it all to hell. Let's do this one for Jesse and Wedge. They deserve it. Yeah. Sure. <sighs> I didn't think word would spread this fast. There's barely anyone on this train, and none of them look happy to be here. Might stand out as a group. You two stay here. <laughs> this train section acts as like a nice second half to the train section at the end of chapter two. Because you're going to get to see Barrett react with those people that were like super defensive over Shindra Corporation. And like proper business heads, like they even did the stupid clapping with each other again. But now this time, in a sense of, well, the, the, the carnage hasn't happened yet, so we don't want to make our face too well known. We have to kind of keep it calm and keep it under wraps, otherwise we'll give ourselves away before we even do what we got to do. 
as we'll hopefully pass this ID scan, and hopefully pass any more that comes our way between now and the next Marco Reactor. And that's a smart call, Tifa. That's very smart. Barrett... Uh, yeah, Barrett was very much like ready to like blow a lid last time. And it's like, we don't need him to like... <laughs> we don't need him to cause trouble now before it even begins. Just need to make sure he's going to be alright. Yeah, yeah, be right back. And it makes for a nice continuation of the earlier sequence. You'll see what I mean. Oh, look, here he is. Here he is. Hello, Barrett. How you been? So, do you still support those terrorists? Avalanche is a blight on Midgar. Huh? Their bomb threat has thrown our offices into chaos, let alone the reactor itself. It's total insanity! But we won't lose heart. No! Everyone at Shinra agrees. The reactor will stay online. <laughs> is that right? Uh, what? Y you got a problem with that? Do I have a problem with that? Oh, you can bet. He doesn't. <laughs> Asshole. You know you're better than that. <laughs> it was a good thing we showed up then. <laughs> Before I talk to anyone else, I immediately go and get this materia as well. I mean, you might as well. It's literally right there. And it's healing materia too. So having another character that can carry cure isn't bad. If anything, I'd actually recommend trying to build up. Like, once you've maxed out a Blizzard, for instance, get another one and max that out too. If you can make it so your whole party has access to decent magic instead of just, like, one per person, or, like, some people have this, some people have that, you'll really save your neck later on. But as you turn back, emergency ID scan instead of a normal one. Hmm, that one seems a bit more problematic than the normal ones. Unauthorized IDs detected. Threat level critical. <coughs> Inspection and containment suite initiated. Commencing at the rear of the train. Not good. <coughs> Get over here! Now! <coughs> Take care of them, Cloud! For some reason they put a time limit on in this section, even though it is, this is genuinely only going to take 20 seconds. But I digress, I guess to put the pressure on a little bit. And this is going to be the last talking section of this video, because this video has gone on long enough, and we're going to get into the real meat of what makes this chapter so special next time. So I'm going to wrap it up here as we wreck the hell out of these slug rays in this very linear, tiny environment so they can't escape. Next time on the Final Fantasy VII Remake, we're going to try and get our way towards the correct marker reactor, despite the now new change of plan. But until then, you guys take care now. Peace. And make sure to interact with the door before, to end the section. You have to get out of here. What are you doing? Trying to keep you alive. But I work for Shinra. I'm the enemy. I don't care. I don't want anyone to die. Please. Oh. Look after the others. My turn. <laughs> There's no end to them. Three unauthorized passengers successfully control neutralizing threats. Looks like you're right, soldier boy. Screw this. <clears throat> the station will be crawling with security. We gotta jump. Screw that! We need to slow the train down. Sounds like a big plan E. 